Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Colonation Media, and welcome back to the very next episode of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. This is episode number 32, and we're beginning right where we left off in the last episode, continuing on with all of these lovely battle CDs at Real Gum Tower, and we are beginning with battle CD number 9, a double battle with unlimited turns, and uh, all we have to do is defeat one single lousy level 50, I don't know if I said that twice, I may have, Kecleon. And we have four, count them, four of our own level 25 Pokemon, which makes it kind of interesting, actually. Um, and the key to this battle is preying on Kecleon's special, bil special ability, special ability, and basically turning it against itself, if that makes any sense. All right, so we have Aerodactyl and Hitmonchan on the field first. So we're gonna go for the Ancient Power since Aerodactyl is gonna be the fastest one on the field. But wait, we also have Hitmonchan that has Mach Punch, which allows it to move first. So we're gonna go with Wing Attack and Mach Punch because Mach Punch will allow Hitmonchan to attack Kecleon before anyone else. It's gonna be super effective on Kecleon's normal type and it's going to change itself into a fighting type, which we can then prey on with Aerodactyl's wing attack. And we've already got it down to like a quarter or a third of its health left. Kecleon goes for the Aerial Ace on Hitmonchan, and obviously that's going to knock it out in one hit. Uh, because it is super effective, and it's 25 levels higher for Pete's sake. Let's see what we have here and as uh, far as move goes. Moves go... Whatever. You know what I mean. I can't talk, but you know what I'm saying, yo. Alright, let's see. Aerodactyl has Ancient Power, Wing Attack, Bite, and Dragon Breath. Dragon Breath is definitely out because uh, the only thing that would be super effective on that once Kecleon changes its type would be Ice and um, other Dragon types, and we don't have any of those. So... And especially be considering that Kecleon's probably going to knock out Aerodactyl in the next turn. So we need to keep that in mind. Alright, so I guess it, in that case it doesn't really matter which Pokemon we send out first. I'll send out Hariyama just because he can probably withstand anything but Aerial Ace. Um, Vital Throw is interesting because it makes Hariyama go last, although... Any of his other moves are going to go last anyway because he's just so slow and there's no way that Kecleon is slower. So we'll use Aerodactyl's Ancient Power and considering the last move that we used was Wing Attack, that's going to be super effective and turn Kecleon into a Rock type which we can then attack with Hariyama uh, with Vital Throw and get the super effective hit once again. Aerodactyl goes down though, sadly to a Thunderbolt, but we still have Giraffe Rig. So, I'm feeling safe because Kecleon's getting low on health, and that's going to do a lot of damage. Down to 17 now, one more hit, so he can't knock out both of us in one turn, so I'm not worried at all. We can go for the Psychic, um, and it doesn't matter what we do with uh, Hariyama, so we might as well uh, just go for the Earthquake, because at that point, it just won't matter, like I said. Anywho, Kecleon can't outspeed a level 25 Giraffe Rig, which is kind of sad, and Psychic knocks him out. And that's going to be it. Very strategic battle, uh, and that's a good battle to help you practice uh, type combinations and uh, type advantages and matchups and all that stuff, uh, because it's really essential to succeeding in the game, um, especially in uh, competitive battles, even more so than the storyline. We get a full heal for that, which kind of sucks, to be honest, but, like, five full heals would have been cool. But, oh well, I guess we can't complain. Do I need to buy more? I don't even know what I'm doing. Yes, Battle CD 25, 26, and 30. See, why couldn't it just be 27? Honestly, I don't understand why this does what it does. I guess we can take a look at what the CDs are now. What do we have here? Are those the only three that I have left to do? Vigoroth, Tusum, I think I know which one this is. We have two Vigoroths, both are at level 50. Well, actually, everyone in this battle is at level 50. And we're taking on a team of three, so it's kind of like a handicap match. 
I have a Ninjask, Clefable, and Earthring, and it looks like Clefable likes to use Cosmic Power and follow me. I believe that's the uh, center of that battle. And then in uh, 26, we have two Slekings and an Exploud against a Blissey and Junk. Sheninja and Raticate versus Meditite and Medicham. Okay, so we're going to get to all these. Let's just start uh, with 25 and go from there. So this one isn't that bad. This is the two Vigoroths versus Clefable, Ursaring, and Ninjask. And the key to this battle uh, is using, or actually preventing Clefable from using Follow Me because that's what is going to destroy the entire battle. You actually need to use Ursaring to kill off Clefable with Earthquake, and I'll explain that a little bit later on. Alright, so, of course, she starts out with Ninjask and Clefable, so we need to be able to get one of these Pokemon out of here, namely Ninjask. So that's what we're going to be going after to get rid of first. The sad part is that the only attack move that we have is Facade. We also have Taunt and Encore, so I'm going to... Taunt and Encore Clefable on the first turn. And see what happens. Especially because uh, Clefable likes to use Cosmic Power and Follow Me, Taunt's going to not allow it to use that. So it couldn't attack this turn. Ninjas gets the speed boost, but it's already the fastest one on the field. Alright, so let's see. We'll use Encore. And then with this figure off, see what I want to do here. Um, yeah, we'll Encore Ninjask, and then we'll Encore Clefable, and, oh, wait, I don't know if that's actually going to work. Ninjask goes for the Swords Dance, which is good. I know I did that move correctly. Hopefully I did the Clefable one right, because now it's going to, oh, no, I didn't do it right. Oh, well. Hopefully that doesn't cost us the battle. It goes for the Pound. I think I can recover from this. But anywho, the important part is that we Encore Ninja, so it just has to use Swords Dance for the next couple of turns and can't do anything else. Namely, Protect. So we can get rid of it. So what you want to do now is focus your attacks not just on Ninja, but also on Clefable. You want to spread it out a little bit uh, because when Earthring comes out, he's going to use Earthquake. So you want it to be able to be where Clefable can be knocked out by Earthquake or close to it. So we're going to attack both of them, especially also because Clefable is going to use Cosmic Power like that and raise its defenses up, which is just bad news. One thing to keep in mind here is that Clefable does have the Cute Charm ability, so do not have the female Vigoroth attack the male Clefable because the chances are when you use Facade, you do make physical contact and um, you're going to get attracted to it and that's just going to make it a pain in the butt to continue on this battle um, because Clefable is going to be around towards the end of the battle and um, not only does it prevent you from attacking Clefable effectively, it also prevents you from using any moves even against Ninjask or Ursaring and every turn is vital in this so don't get attracted to Clefable, only use the male Vigoroth to attack the male Clefable and you'll be good to go. One thing to keep in mind also I feel like I'm just listing things, it's like a big laundry list. Uh, is that the Encore will wear off, and when that happens, Ninja Ask is almost always going to go for the Leech Life, and it's going to recover a lot of health. And that's not good news for you, because that could mean an extra turn waiting to knock it out, and you don't want that to happen. So be careful. Be reasonable. And my idea of being reasonable is knocking out Ninja Ask right now. We're ready to go. Bringing out that Ursaring. As soon as, yeah, as soon as this Ursaring hits the field, you want to focus all of your attacks on it, because, like I said, it's just going to keep using Earthquake. It's going to spam the crap out of it, and you're going to be dead in a couple of turns. So, focus all of your attacks on it. Just keep facading the crap out of it. It should take four hits, uh, unless you get a critical, obviously. Um, so, as you can see, that brings him down a little bit past half health. Clefable goes for the Cosmic Power again, which is a good move, uh, because with the Earthquake coming, it is going to take damage, um, and it shouldn't kill it unless it gets a critical. And on the bigger off, it's going to take away half of your health each, so you can only withstand one, really. Oh, and it gets a critical hit on Clefable. Oh, man. Okay. 
That would have drawn this battle out a lot longer, but now this battle is in the bag because both of the Vigoroths are faster than Ursaring, and it's not going to be able to take two more facades. There you have it. Without the critical hits, um, you really still wouldn't have that much to worry about. Uh, still focus your attacks on the Ursaring, and then uh, once it's gone, you should be able to knock out the Clefable as well. Uh, maybe with one or two facades. So, you don't have that much to worry about. But I kind of skipped over that part because I got lucky with the critical hit. Oh well. I can't complain for being lucky for once, right? And we're going to get the white herb, which is actually a useful item. Hooray! And that was Ralts being ready to be uh, purified, I think. Anywho, the white herb restores any lord stat. So, if you use a move like Psycho Boost... Or, I don't know what else. There's, I'm sure there's other moves. There are. Anywho. Yes. If you use Psycho Boost, then it lowers your special attack by two uh, stages. What that's going to do is restore that stat for you. So, it would be like you didn't lose any special attack at all. And I don't know why I can't think of any other examples. But, I know you guys can. So, put it in the comment section. And then, we we'll talk about how stupid I am for forgetting it. Alright, I want to say Leaf Storm, but that's not a move in this game, so that's not a valid response. Alright, in this battle, this is a really boring, kind of crappy battle. I, I don't like this one. Um, I think it's kind of stupid, honestly. Anyway, we begin with two Slackings, and the hard part about this is Slacking's Truant ability. And... That's because it can only attack, you know, basically once every two turns. So, we need to work around that somehow. And I'm going to show you how. Blissey is going to go for the Protect, and so is Kecleon on the first turn. So, Double Edge is going to do nothing to Blissey. Obviously, it doesn't matter which you use it on, because it does, just doesn't matter. It's not going to work. Blissey goes for the Egg Bomb, which is an awesome move, but Blissey's attack is so bad that you don't have to worry about it at all. It's going to do nothing. And, yeah, same thing with Kecleon. Scratch. Really? Kecleon? Scratch? Go for the Roar with Exploud. Not that you had any other options to begin with, because that's the only move he knows. To bring out Dusclops. And now what you want to do is... Let's see, we're going to go for the Shadow Ball, I think, or we can switch out. Mm, let's see here, we need to think about the cycles of the Truant, and I think it's going to be better for us to switch out based on the Protect, the, the way the Protect falls, because you want it to be where when they're not protecting, you can attack on them on them, at them, with them, around them. Yeah, it's kind of tricky, but kind of really stupid at the same time. It's like a big chess match, and you basically need it to be where you can attack when they're not protecting, and they're protecting when you can't attack anyway, if that makes any sense. Which kind of doesn't. Alright, guess we can go for the Shadow Ball on Dusclops, and we'll roar. Doesn't matter. Because we're going to kill Dusclops on this turn. So Roar will have no effect. Goodbye Dusclops. How often do you see a Dusclops get knocked out one hit? Let's be honest about this. How often does that ever happen? In the history of forever. Out comes Kecleon yet again. And Blissey goes for the Egg Bomb. Because Blissey's stupid. Nah, I like Blissey. Blissey's cool. Roar obviously does nothing from uh, here on out because you don't have any Pokemon to force out because she only has two Pokemon left. So there can't be any switching. But they're going to use Protect this turn, so we need to switch out um, for the other Slacking so that we'll be able to attack on the downturn of Protect. And Roar does nothing yet again. Now we can Double Edge Blissey. And I don't know if that's going to knock it out in one hit. So we'll go with Kecleon. Why not? I'm pretty sure that should knock out Kecleon. Oh, it got a critical hit. 
So I guess it doesn't matter. And Blissey's defense is so retardedly low, I'm thinking it is going to knock it out in one hit. Even though it does have like a crap ton of HP, maybe I'll get lucky with another critical hit, you never know. No, that doesn't mean you can get a critical hit with the egg bomb, Blissey, you big, you big egg thing. Like, Blissey is just a giant egg with arms and legs and an egg pouch. Not even cool. Alright, this should be the last turn. Turn number 8. I didn't look to see if there was a uh, turn limit on this battle. But I would imagine not. I don't know. It's just about getting around the Protect. Nothing fancy. Koki. I didn't even notice her name. Koki. That's a cool name. Oh, she fainted. It was too much for her. Our manliness was too much for her. Yes. Oh, it was an 8 turn limit. And we did it in exactly 8 turns. So I guess... uh. Guess we did a good job there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Alright, well, we're going to be receiving an Ultra Ball for our troubles here, which is nothing much, but what else is new? I'm going to call it an episode here since we're running out of time, and in the next episode, we've got so much to do here at Realgum Tower, so we just need to keep doing what we're doing. Thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for episode number 33. Game on!